Hello guys, this is Death Dealer and welcome back to another episode of our Single Plus Survival. This is episode 33 and today we're going to be continuing working on our villager area of the world. Now, recently we have been very productive as you can see behind me with the big massive food farm, storage, item transport, villager breeding, breeding in general. <laughs> Just basically everything to do with villagers, we have been very very productive. But today I want to just kind of get all this stuff sorted out. Now as you can see, these villagers are all over the place. That was from picking out villagers for the farm up there. And I want a system that I can do this a little bit easier and a system where I can trade with the villagers I want. So today we're going to be making a villager trading area. We're going to be using the design by SC Perry, I believe. And yeah, but anyways, as you can see, we have like 50 villagers or so in here, roughly, and more coming in. I think I have the village breeder turned off right now, well, not exactly turned off, it just isn't getting food at the moment. Yeah, anyways, before we even do that, let's go check check on our storage situation, because we have a ton of chests, and yeah, um, food is going, going all over the place, but yeah, it's <laughs> it is doing very, very well. Now I can guarantee you that all the, if we were to put this into our system and for trading we can basically get rid of all of this in like 3 minutes in the end but yeah eventually we will be expanding and making more of those farming modules. The only problem is it's very very laggy with this design when I get up close to it I drop from like I'm sitting at 60 FPS right now when I get right up close I drop to about 20 and it fluctuates quite a lot so yeah. It is not exactly an ideal farm for my machine, but I guess it's time for an upgrade, which we will be doing at some point. The village, they're still breeding. Okay, anyways, yeah, <laughs> it happens. But yeah, for the design, before we can even get started on designing the trading hall itself, we need to work on getting the villagers out of this little hole. Because this isn't an exact, well, is isn't an ideal situation right now, because the way we need to set this up, Excuse me, as we we developed us to be standing right on top of a rail. So, um, do I have any blocks? Come on, uh, just to kind of visualize what's happening. Right, so, um, oh, the cobblestone wall will be the block that the villagers stand on. This isn't, the, the, this is just to represent what's happening. And essentially, we're going to have slopes, well, um, rails that are kind of sloping up and over, and so like, you'd have a, dis a dispenser or something here that would, um, every time you request a villager to be sent to the villager trading hall, for example, you press a button, red cell signal activates, hits the dispenser, shoots out a main card and it shoots up, so you'd have like glass blocks right here as well, and the, put that block go all the way over here, damn. Um, you, the main card will be able to go through the blocks, pick up a villager and zoom on over to the thing. Now I don't actually know where I want to put this yet, which is um, kind of a problem because this island is actually pretty small. So we're running up space pretty pretty fast, plus I want to have the iron farm around here, probably in that side of the island, away from everything. Because well, lag and stuff, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also I'd like to remind you that these episodes from here up to episode 40 I believe are all pre-recorded so I won't be able to see any comments or any, on any videos from like episode 28 onwards so yeah just bear, bear that in mind it may be a few weeks before I can actually do any fixes or anything that I need to do but guys I am going to get started on today's project because I want to get this all done and dusted because I still have a ton of episodes to record because yeah I'm gone on vacation Anyways, let's do this. Okay guys, I am back and as you can see we have a kind of <laughs> semi-finished system, I guess. Yeah, it was relatively simple to do, I think. Well, yeah, I had to implement some water here to get the villagers to go up. And then once they were up there, they were shooting back and forth constantly because of the water streams. Pretty fun. But yeah, um, I haven't tested this system out, I have a ton of minecarts, you have no idea how much iron I spent on this thing. Oh, this island in total, the amount of iron. I think I'm completely out. 
I may have some at the slime farm, but it's unlikely. Yeah, I really need to go mining at some point. No, 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 no. We need to get the iron farm operational. <laughs> That's what. But yeah, guys, let's get this. Well, let's do a test run, shall we? So, imagine we're over at the villager trading hall, which is going to be over here. I've decided. And yeah, right, yeah, right. We want in our villager. So press a button, send the signal back to the dispenser. Okay, um, that is a slight setback. It's not meant to do that. It's meant to like go straight away. Um, that's not what we want. Right, um, you're a network, so you can. Where's my boat? Uh, I don't know. Um, you can go away. So, hmm. That's not good. Right, I'm going to need to do some more testing with this thing. I may actually have to move this over a little bit. It's just some case of moving the dispenser, actually. Hopefully that works. Okay, guys, I am back. So, I found a fix for the design. All I had to do was lower the dispensing segment by one block. And instead of running the diagonal track up this block, in fact goes below it and connects diagonally. Now I don't know how that works, but it does. <laughs> so let's just do a test and this will prove that it works. So press button and off it goes. So any good trades, young sir? No. Hmm. Um, no, not really. Uh, this guy had an okay gold trade. He's Rotten flesh trade which is complete rubbish, but yeah, it's um, it's going good. So if anyone else, I can kind of click no leather worker ten three for that no armorer. Nah, I can only get the armor right. So now that we have that done and dusted, we can now start work on the village or trading hall, which will be using the design by SC Pedi. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I've used that one before. Now, the funny thing is, this is the first successful kind of breeder thing I've done in quite a while. The last time I even attempted to work with villagers was about a year ago now. So, yeah, it's um, well, it's looking good. I think it was in my most recent episode of the Vulture SMP server, which is like a year ago when I last recorded. We do only need to get back on there with those guys. The server's been kind of inactive since. But yeah, um, <laughs> it's good to <laughs> finally get back into some... Um, interesting mechanics in Minecraft. Also we need to fill up the other um, 8 slots with 16 villagers to complete the breeder. But yeah, um, 8 villagers have done the trick. Now since we have this system operational we can now actually st start feeding them again. So uh, yeah, uh, that means we will get more villagers coming in. So uh, what are you? You're a cartographer, right? And you're a network. I hate networks. Also, remember that village we went to a couple of episodes ago to grab the starting villagers and then we ended up going there to mine sand? You, you remember? Well, that village will one day be reborn because we're going to be doing a few projects over there in the not so distant future. I want to renovate the village and then eventually move back the original inhabitants, well move them back into the village. Just, you know, just some fun, right? Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling on because we're losing time in the episode and I have a lot of stuff to do. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get started on building this villager trading hall, I think. You know what? I'm going to build it all. And when I come back, we should be able to start moving the villagers in. And then we'll deal with disposing of the ones we don't want. Yeah? Good. Let's go. Okay guys, I am back and as you can see we are still nowhere near finished but we can start bringing in villagers. So I have implemented all of the rail systems, redstone systems that take us back and stuff uh, that uh, brings villagers here. Uh, the villager disposal system has also been implemented which I'll show you in just a moment. Anyways, let's try this baby out. So if we press this button, hopefully a villager should come along. So, um, we can actually reach it from here. Um, <laughs> well done. Okay, so now we need to try and get up top to see. No, we can't. Oh well. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just pillar up. 
Right, it always works, right? Yeah, see, filled you right there. And it should drop into the first or second slot. Second slot. Yeah, this happens with this design, but the first slot eventually does get filled in. But yeah, we have our villager and it's a network, of course, which is completely useless to us. So, what we can do about that is, um, before we even go and dispose of them, let's take a look at the disposal system. So, water streams as usual, takes you all the way around, but below there's another track. So, if we just drop down to that track, come all the way along here, and you'll see there's an activator rail. So, when the villager comes over this in the main cart, they'll get shot out onto this block, hopefully, and they'll fall down to his death. Because down there, there is lava. I didn't place it, it happened to be there. And then the main cart goes all the way back to the beginning section. So let us do this so we can. That is the complete wrong button. There we go. <laughs> um, you, you didn't see anything there. Just go in, go in. There we go. Um, <laughs> and this is still a work in progress, of course. Still need to decorate it and everything. But I thought I would show you, show you this at its current stage in the design. But. If he quickly goes, we should have put ice down here or something. We can start a place, of course. And just watch, I just make, need to make sure he actually moves off. No, he doesn't. Right, um. Because he's, he's meant to actually move off by themselves. He did not. Wait, what? He was meant. Ah, uh, oh no. Yeah, this design still needs a little bit of work done to it. So yeah, let me do that and we'll be right back. We'll, we'll say that. Hmm. You know what, I'll finish off doing all the decorating and stuff as well, then we'll, we'll get rid of all the kinks in the design. And when we come back, hopefully this thing should be filled with villagers. Okay guys, I am back and I was able to fix the problem we had in the previous clip. So it was relatively simple things. So let's take a look at them. Right, so, as you've seen, uh, when minecarts with villagers would drop into the hole, they would end up stuck. So, what I did was I put signs underneath the water, like you can see here, and I done one on the opposite side, so that they keep their momentum when they're falling. Essentially, what this means is they will actually move in the right, correct direction when they hit the track. The only issue is, the rail right above that sign right there, if there's a villager that's been ejected from the system, he will get stuck down there until another one comes along and pushes him, which is a design flaw, but there's nothing we can do about that unfortunately. And I've done the same in all the other kind of low points. Now the next problem we had was the ejector system thing, so the activator rail right here, I, I didn't know what it was. The problem was we didn't actually power it, I forgot we had to power the rail for it to work. So now we have and yeah hopefully that should work. So let's get back up here and let's get some more blocks on the hotbar just so that we can uh, see the villagers coming. So do that and uh, I hate working with villagers, I hate working with villagers, uh, I really need a break. <laughs> That's the effect villagers have on you, but yeah, we can now watch for some more coming. So yeah, I think that's a cleric. See if he has any good trades, it's unlikely, but it's worth a shot. So, mm-hmm. Down you come, come on now. Right, so let's take a look at him then. 36, we can do better. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's better in there. So, Pull the button, push the button, sorry. And we will now watch. Oh yeah, and I put in this retaining wall so that it doesn't actually like land the top of the block. Which is a <laughs> what we should have done in the first place. Yeah. Right, come on guy. So here's a prime example of what I was talking about. So it starts moving down and then he's off. And if we are quick, we should be able to watch see. Oh no, I pushed it back. But yeah, it fell down to his death. That, sh that cart should come back. Maybe. Let's give it a moment. Damn, I really need spectator. <laughs> oh, there it is. You know, no, 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 no. 
Um, no, you're meant to be down here. It's, uh, villagers, man. Why you do this? Okay, guys, we are back. And I fixed the issue we had with the villager ejection thing. But yeah, this is the trading hall. I'm not entirely happy with the design just yet. It's, it's, it's different. I haven't really worked with the concrete pill there before. I've had to go and gather some of the resources. But yeah, it's, it's different. But yeah, let's take a look at the, <laughs> the monstrosity that is down here now. I fixed it. I was trying to do it with um, slime blocks at one point. And it completely broke, so I just used regular blocks and stuff, and it it works. Um, the way it, what happens is, you know how I was having problems where like the villager wouldn't eject in the right position. Well, I had a detector rail like after the villager gets ejected, it sends a redstone pulse through the pistons, pushes the villager over, and then just a little bit after that, the floor retracts. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I spent a little bit too much time on that. <laughs> but yeah, we have our trading hall up and running now and it works. It works like a charm. Now, guess what I got? A mending villager. Boo, 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 boo. 14 emeralds. I don't know if that's a good price or not. I think it is. I think it's really good. 14 emeralds for a mending, but that's not bad. Now we have a few like cartographers and librarians about, so getting an emerald should be relatively straightforward because we have tons and tons of paper trays like this one for example is really good, and that one's okay but aquafinity 18 emeralds not bad could be better though, so yeah I think this project was a success, even though it took me quite a while to do, so I I kind of need a break from villagers for a little while. Yes, that this is what happens when you spend so long messing about with these horrible, horrible creatures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, I will be kind of redoing this design after my vacation, so after episode forty. But that will be when I'll be able to read all your comments and stuff and s see what you guys think. But yeah, this job. But guys, I'm afraid that is it for this episode, so as always, if you like this episode, please make sure to hit that like button, and if you really enjoyed it and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.